We all love to eat. Researchers know today that we can do very little about the excess calories we're exposed to every day. Philip Shearer has devoted his scientific career to exploring how healthy fat tissue can help us cope with excess calories. My lab has the, the, the questionable reputation of having made the fattest mouse ever generated uh, in the history of mankind. These mice will overeat massively, they will expand their subcutaneous fat mass very extensively, but despite the fact that in some cases actually we've been uh, able to generate uh, the mouse equivalent of a, a five or six hundred pound uh, individual, Despite the massive fat mass that these mice actually display, they're completely healthy and enjoy a long and happy life. It was not in the cards when Philip Shearer began his research career 30 years ago that understanding the function of fatty tissue would play a major role. He grew up in the Swiss Alps, got his education and studied protein transport at the University of Basel. And I decided then to actually join Harvey Lotus's lab at MIT, uh, where we started to study fat cells and uh, how fat cells respond to insulin with respect to their glucose uptake. Uh, and in that process, I realized back in the early 1990s that the field of glucose uptake into fat cells and muscle cells was incredibly crowded. And as a result, I uh, figured, well, let's try to do a little something different. Let's see whether these fat cells actually do more than just take up lipids and glucose in response to insulin. Shearer and his colleagues started to look for interesting molecules secreted by fat cells. They struck gold in 1995 when they stumbled on the protein we now know as adiponectin. This occurred at almost the same time that Jeff Friedman's lab reported finding leptin, another protein secreted by fat cells. And ever since then, over the past um, uh, 20 years, a uh, little longer than that now, both leptin and adiponectin have actually been instrumental uh, for our understanding of how adipose tissue interacts with other uh, organs within the system and how it maintains overall metabolic health. Today, adiponectin plays a key role in research on obesity and type 2 diabetes. At that time, the effect of adiponectin totally surprised Shearer and his colleagues. Unlike anything else out there that the fat cell produces, adiponectin is different. It actually turns out the more adipose tissue you have, generally speaking, the less adiponectin goes into the system. This is a little bit counterintuitive, but you can really understand it when you look at adiponectin with all its highly beneficial effects. It turns out that adiponectin helps the body build healthy fat tissue and that obese people often become obese because they have lower adiponectin levels. Over the last 20 years, the fat cell, unlike any other cell type out there, has undergone a complete image change. We used to think of it as flubber, basically. As such, the fat cell has really become center stage as a key regulator of our metabolism beyond its ability to store excess calories. Adiponectin is central to this regulation and considered to be one of the most important biomarkers for determining health and an important target for future treatment. There are a couple of reasons why it's not necessarily the magic pill out there, um, it is a complicated protein to produce. It is a complicated protein to maintain uh, fully functional. Perhaps more relevant right now, developments over the last year or two have revealed that the adiponectin receptors, in other words, the mediators of adiponectin action, may be prime pharmacological targets. 